We're here downtown evangelizing and we've come across some other Christians. Look at this. This is beautiful that all these believers and all these Christians would come together to praise God, to worship Him. Revival is happening in San Antonio. So you can't see out of your left eye? No. At all? No. Jesus, this is a proof that we should It's the same thing as being high. Drink my wine, eat my bread, brother. Yeah. Um, yeah, but Maybe it's fornication. You married? No. You having sex outside of marriage? Uh, yeah, it's me and my girlfriend. That's fornication. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and I love you enough to yeah, tell yeah, you the yeah, truth. Trust me, I understand. I understand. That's a sin, brother. Yes, sir. Right now. 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 Right yeah. You see you see any better? Yeah, I can see you. We're here downtown evangelizing and we've come across some other Christians. Look at this. This is beautiful that all these believers and all these Christians would come together to praise God, to worship Him. Revival is happening in San Antonio and it's beautiful. Praise God. Yeah. All right, so we are out here evangelizing downtown uh, San Antonio. As we were walking uh, to the Alamo, I came across a brother who was evangelizing. His name is Jeremiah, and he's out here doing the work of the Lord. He's out here doing what we're called to do. The Great Commission, Jesus calls us to go out and preach the gospel. Jeremiah. Let me ask you a question, bro. Why are you out here evangelizing? Well, right now I'm out here because I feel as if like the times that we see mentioned in the book, the times that we see that are at hand, which is it's mentioned, the kingdom of the Lord is at hand. We need to repent. There's so many people that don't know about that. There's so many people that don't read, man. Even inside the church, there's people that don't even read the word. Uh, and not reading the word, not reading the living word of God, not having that relationship with him. So just being overflowed with the spirit of the Lord and what he has done to me in that church by changing my life and turning me away from the past to being this person that I'm able, I'm able to, that went through something and hopefully able to share with other people is the reason why I'm out here to, um, to over overflow to people, not just to keep it to myself. There's so much that he does to each and every one of us, and we just tend to stay comfortable in the church, and we don't we don't overflow out into this world and what he wants us to do, which is in, in Matthew 20, uh, Matthew 20, 18, uh, 20, um, to just go out in this world and just share his gospel, man, go out into the nations, and it's just something we all have to do as believers through through Christ. And and what really touched me was that the 
disciples that Christ Jesus has brought with him was at a young age. So being being young and, and fearless and having that boldness that we could ask for and receive when we ask for it. And anybody could do it. Not just me, not just anybody could do it once you if you really want to and if you want to do more for him because he's done so much for us he went to that cross for each and every one of us knowing that we're going to sin knowing that we're going to fall short and he still went to that cross and we all could do what hey man that's awesome bro one of the things i love that you said is that there's a lot of people who, who go to church right and a lot of people believe that just because they go to church or just because they say i believe in god that they're saved however in the book of james chapter four James says, even the devils believe, even the demons believe and tremble, right? And in that same context, James talks about living faith by our works. What you're doing, brother, is living faith. Your faith is living, alive, and active, just like his word. So I commend you, Jeremiah, for what you're doing, bro. And another thing that I like that you said is you said that all the disciples were young. Historians and theologians believe that all the disciples were like teenagers, no, no older than, than, than their early 20s. So you're right, man. Anyone can do this. We're all called as Christians to evangelize. All right, Jeremiah. So you have a sign out here. Show us what, what it says and tell us what it means. Uh, well, I have repent or perish and Jesus is king. Jesus is king. Um, Jesus is king over over everything in life. He's a name above names. He's king over whatever we allow him to be king over. We allow him to be king over our lives. He's going to be king over our lives and and lift us up to to be under him, of course, being his servant. But since he's a king, since he has no failure and he has victory over all, we're going to be there under him as his servants with him through it all and being able to pull each and every one of brothers and sisters and people in this world our neighbors along with us to just pick each and every one of us together up together as one through christ so that means a lot that's what that means to me is like he's king through my life i want him to be king through each and every one of their lives so that we could rise together as one as a body um, of the church and under his blood all things are possible and amen he's king over it all repent or perish man it's as simple as that why don't you show us what, show the what does that mean repent or perish we just need to repent from our sins every day even though we think we're even though we think we're as perfect as we possibly can be even though we try so hard just moving day by day without blemish or without um, falling short as we think there's still things we, we fall short of so just even though we think we're at our, at our highest or, or as perfect as we possibly can we still need to repent because that's what brings us closer to God uh, even as, as like pastors or preachers or, or um, brothers and sisters of the church it's, it's for a message to reach each and every one of us nobody's higher than another and we all need to just repent day by day that's what brings us back together as one through God so and, and I, I believe that like if we don't repent if we don't in true repentance true repentance is, is the biggest thing so uh, just coming before him even though we fall short even though we struggle with those sins let's say we just continue to go back to those sins continue to go back day by day we still need to come before him and repent because he knows our heart truly and being able to repent from that he knows that we want to turn away from it and there's no other way to turn away from it then that goes back to Jesus is king he's, Amen. he's king over that he's king over those situations he's king over that anxiety that depression those things that yes make us fall short of that or seeking those pleasures so he's king over it all and we just need to repent because we could definitely perish it's as easy as just as being out here man there's so much temptation just even about here even out here in the in the trenches for the lord like you know, it's this is it's hell man if we don't repent it's hell if we don't turn away from it that's beautiful jeremiah the bible says um i like what you said he said truly repent right because repent means you turn away from your sins you change your mind right there's a lot of people who continue living in their sin and we had the question like is that true repentance right and the bible says otherwise man because repentance means you change your mind meaning you you make the you make the decision to never do that again and i think this is a good message man not just for the world but for the church because you touch on that man uh, again i want to commend you bro because what you're doing, bro, is, is not in vain. 
we have to do this as Christians. There's not too many people that do this. And I want to honor you, brother. And I'm going to be praying for you, Jeremiah, and for everybody else who is here. Um, I think it's beautiful what you're doing. And that was a beautiful message that you shared with me right now, man. So thank you. Oh, All right, so we're out here today evangelizing uh, downtown San Antonio. And as we were evangelizing, uh, this brother came up to me. And ho without giving away his name, why don't you share what your name is? Jose Gillen. Jose. Jose, I saw your shirt, man. It says, y'all need Jesus. Yes, sir. What does Jesus mean to you? Jesus, he's my father, and he's the truth and the life and the way. No one comes to the Father except through Jesus. Amen. That's powerful, brother. Now, um, why don't you share with me and the people who are watching what happened to you when you were a child? You just shared with me a little bit of your testimony, and I think it's such a beautiful testimony. So I want you to share what happened to you. Well, my mom and my my mom used to do drugs. So when I was a, a, a baby, I was born with an of glioma brain tumor, and I was born partially blind because I was a baby. So um, when I turned eight years old, I went to a church in Minnesota. And at the Sunday school class, I stayed home. I stayed, and I and I asked the pastor that I would like to accept God in my life. And as I did, I've been praying and praying and praying. So one day, I went to a church, and I and I prayed, and I fell, and I was talking in tongues. And then uh, two, three days later, I went to go have an MRI done. And the doctor said, well, guess what? We can't do no more MRIs because your brain tumor is now gone. Amen. What a powerful testimony. So your brain tumor was gone. Of course. That's beautiful, man. What a beautiful testimony. Jose, you are a miracle. Of course. I know I am. God himself saved you for a reason. He has a plan and a purpose for your life. Do you believe that? Yes. And also, I ain't ashamed to worship and pray anywhere I am. I love to pray my father and I love to lift up my hands and... And one time my father, I, I went to a church with him and he pitched me and said, Jose, you are ashamed. I like to sit down. You embarrass me. So he sent me to the restroom and, and grabbed me by my hair and hit me on the wall. Can I show you? Like this. Look. Grab me. Like this. Hit me in the wall. Like. Why is that? Because I, I, I was an embarrassment to him. Because of your disorder? Because of what happened to you? Yes. How old he were you when it happened? And he slapped me. I was like uh, 18 when he did that to me. It, it, it hurt you, right? Of course. I can tell you're getting emotional right now. Of course. Yeah. Well, listen, Jose, uh, I want to thank you for sharing that. Oh, for, no, for, for sharing welcome. that information, I want to thank you for sharing your testimony. You are a walking miracle, Jose. Yes, I know you, sh I am. you should have been dead, but God saved you, and God. Of course. Now, I want to pray. He has me here for a purpose. Yes, I want to pray for you, Jose. I want to pray that that God's purpose and His plan for you would be fulfilled in your life. Thank you. That He would heal you from all the pain that you went through with your family, thank and I want to pray for you that you would be completely healed in your in your eyes. Thank you. Tell me what's going on with, with your eyes. Well, since uh, I had radiation for a long time, and also I had a brain tumor around between my active nerves, that's why. Since I grew up with a brain tumor. And so you can't see out of your left eye? No. At all? No. No. And then on the right eye, you just see like tunnel vision. Yes. I see you're walking around, and forgive me, but what is this card right here? This, what is this card right here? A cane for people who are blind. A cane, okay. I see, I see you walking around with, with your cane, brother. Yes, and sir. I believe that there's power in the name of Jesus. Of course there is. To heal you completely. Of course. To heal you completely, that you would be completely healed in your eyes. Yes, I know. He, I know that you would be able to see out of this eye. Yes, sir. And that that and, and that on this side you would see that you would see a lot better. Thank you. 
Thank so you. I'm, I'm gonna pray for you. Are you okay with that, Jose? Yes, sir. Let's pray. Okay. Okay. Jose, here, come, come, come this way a little bit. Come off sure. the thing. Do you believe that that God can heal you? Of course. You do? Yes. The Bible says, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, I have faith right now, and if me and you can come in agreement that you're gonna be healed right now, I believe that God can heal you right now. Of course. Okay. Yes, sir. So we're gonna pray. We're gonna pray for your past. I know you've been hurt. We're gonna pray that God would heal you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, okay? Yes, sir. All right. Father God, I come before you in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, we would have gotten here anyway. God, I'm praying right now, Father, for Jose. God, he loves you. And he is unashamed of you. He is unashamed of the gospel. He's been, he's, he's been through a lot as a child. He had a brain tumor as a young child. But God, you saved him. He should have been dead. He should have been dead right now, Lord Jesus. But you saved him because you have a plan and a purpose for his life. Now, God, we come together, Lord, before you in agreement, God, believing that you can heal Jose from not only his physical disabilities, but, God, the pain that, it, that he is feeling in his heart because of everything that he went through as a child, through his sickness and everything that he went through with his, with his family, Lord Jesus. He was hurt as a child because of, this, uh, because of this disability. Some people said that he was an embarrassment. Some of his family in the church said that he was an embarrassment because of his disability. But God, we come before you, God, praying and believing that you can heal him right now, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes. So, Lord, God, I God. pray right now, Lord, for Jose, Lord Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. I pray, God, for his eyes, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. I pray, Lord Jesus, for complete healing in his eyes, Father God, that anything, God, that is not from you, Lord, that it would go right now, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. I believe, Father, that by your stripes we are healed, Father, and I pray, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, sir. That Jose would be able to see from this day forward, God. That Jose, Father, will see once again from his fr from these eyes, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, sir. Lord, I come against and I break, Father, any curse, any any generational curse in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Father. And I come against any demonic spirit, any demonic attack, Lord, right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. That Jose would be free from this moment forward, from this day forward, God, that Jose would be free. And I pray, Lord, Father, for complete healing right now, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Jose, be healed right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I pray that yes, this blindness Lord, would go right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Thank Lord, you, Father, Lord. for this opportunity, Lord. We come together, Lord, in agreement, believing, God, that you can heal him, Lord. Lord, anything, Father, any sickness and disease, God, that is not from you, Father, I rebuke it right now, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, and I command it to go right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, I thank you, Lord. I pray, Lord, Father, thank you, Lord, in the mighty name of yes, Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, brother, for letting me pray for you. Yes. Thank you, you, brother. Oh, pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. You see, you see any better? Yeah, I can see you. So you can't see out of your left eye? No. At all? No. Before, when I close this eye, I can see a shadow on your head. Like it's gone, but now I can see. Honestly, you can. Honestly, you can see me. Yeah. Okay. So on this side, how do you see on this side? Uh, just a little bit better. You can before. see a little bit better. Yes. And what about on this side? It's on this still side. the same. I can see my brother, the light. Okay. And that's it. So you can see better on this side. Yes. Praise God. Yeah. Praise God. So it's better. Yes. Jose, God's going to heal you completely. Oh, yeah. I, I believe know. that. Okay? I know. On his time. On his time. He's going to heal you. Oh, yes. I, I know. believe it. I know. Me too. I believe. I'm going to continue praying for you, Jose. Yes. All right? Okay. That, God, that God would finish what he started today. That God would finish what he started in this moment. Thank you. That he would heal you completely, okay? Thank you. Yes, sir. What do you think about this, bro?
the people out here, they're unashamed of the gospel. And they're doing what we're all called to do, and that's to preach the gospel. Yeah. Yeah. I do pray for it. Uh, it's one thing I hope he helps me with. And I know it's a mindset. I know it's something I should work on myself. But uh, it's about it. Yeah, about it. I want to pray for you. Bro. Yeah, yeah, pray for you, man. I love it. Just pray. Yeah. We're gonna pray, bro. That whatever you're struggling with, like it. Maybe, maybe the, the lack of prayer, the lack of faith. Maybe it's drinking. Maybe it's fornication. You married? No. You having sex outside of marriage? Uh, yeah, it's me and my girlfriend. That's fornication. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I and understand. I love you enough to no, tell yeah, you the yeah, truth. Yeah, trust me, I understand. I understand. That's a sin, brother. Yes, sir. I understand. I know. I know. And Christ has called us to be a new creation, uh -huh. to repent and to turn away from that yeah. sin. All right. I believe, man, that God has a plan and a purpose for your life. Oh, yeah, I truly I know believe that. that. I know that. You believe that? Yes, sir. I know that. Are you walking in His plan and His purpose right now? Uh, I try to. I try to. I try to live my life. Christ right. doesn't want you drinking. If I'm being honest with you, He doesn't want you drinking, brother. You're special, okay. and you're better than that. Thank you. I appreciate it. Honestly, you are. Oh yeah, I appreciate it, man. You're special, bro. Honestly. It. Thank you. And Christ doesn't want you living in sin. He doesn't want you living in fornication. Right. I believe that. The Bible says that the, like the sexual immoral will not enter the kingdom of God. Uh -huh. Brother, you have to repent. Right. Honestly. Trust me. Yeah, I know. I know. I do. Trust me. Let this be a reminder to you, bro. Let this be a wake-up call. Yeah, thank you. I, trust me. I, I, I love that you're doing that. because Look at this, bro. Yeah, I see it. Trust this me. is beautiful. Yeah. Christ loves you. Thank you. And he's called you to repent this, brother. Thank you. He doesn't want you living like this. All right. You're called for much greater. I believe that myself. Thank you. Honestly, you are. Thank you. You're called to do great things for the Lord. This is not a coincidence. No, it's not. No, trust me, it's not. It's not a coincidence. No, I know that. That's what I say. God Thank is speaking you. to you right now. He wants to tell you that He loves you. Right. And He wants you to walk in His plan and His purpose. Right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you Let's for pray. That. We're gonna pray. Yeah. Okay. One second. There's no other life but you. What's your name again? Chris. Chris. My name's Abel. Nice to meet you. I want to say I love you, Chris. You. Christ, but most importantly, Christ loves you. We're going to pray right now, okay? Father God, I come before you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, for Chris. I thank you for his life, God. I know, God, and I believe, God, that this is not a coincidence. God, I believe, Father, that you have a plan and a purpose for his life. I pray, Father, that Chris would walk in your purpose, God, that you would do great things to him, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, we know that nobody's perfect. Your word says that we have all sinned and fallen short of your glory. But thank God that you came in the form of a, in the form of a man to die on the cross for our sins. That if we would confess our sins and repent, that you would forgive us. God, I pray for Chris, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, that you would help him, Lord, that you would give him strength, Lord, that you would convict him, Lord, right now in his heart, God. Father God, that, that Chris, God, would come to full repentance, God, that he would live a life, Lord, according to you, God. But I thank you for his life, God. I pray, Lord, that you, that you would build up his faith, God, that today would be a reminder, God, that you love him and that you're with him. God, that you would build up his faith, God, that, that, that Chris, God, would begin to pray again, that Chris would believe, uh, to, uh, that Chris would start to go to church again, that he would believe in you again, God, and that you would do great things through him, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, God. I pray that you would protect him, God. Lord, wherever he goes, God, as he's out here tonight, God, that you would be with him, Lord. Lord, I pray, God, that you would deliver him from all evil, God. I pray for, over, over him, over his family, over his girlfriend here, God. God, that they would see, God, that they would know that you love them. I thank you, Lord. I give you all the honor and all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Hey, Scott. Right now. Thank you. Freedom. Right now. Right now, Jesus. All right now. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Freedom. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Amen. 
We just finished evangelizing again. God is good. I have a huge smile on my face right now because as you've seen in the video, there is a dozen if not more young people evangelizing, preaching the gospel, praying for people, worshiping and praising God in the streets. And let me tell you that this is the beginning of revival, that God is going to do something in the city, that in San Antonio, God is going to move in a mighty way. And what you've seen in this video is just a glimpse, is, is just the beginning of what God is going to do. So I hope that this video has blessed your life and I hope that it's encouraged you. But I also hope that it's convicted you to evangelize, to be unashamed of the gospel, to fulfill the calling that God has given us all as Christians. To preach the gospel to all the world, to all people. A lot of people think they're not ready. A lot of people think that 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 um, you know they don't know enough scripture, and that's okay. The Bible says that you should study to show yourself approved, and the Bible says to always be ready to give an answer as to why you have this hope. But I pray that anyone who's watching that you would be bold, that you would have a spirit of boldness to go out and to evangelize. 
that you would have a spirit of boldness to talk to your friends, to talk to your family, to talk to your co-workers and see what God can can do through your life. I want to thank everyone for watching. I hope that you would be blessed today and I hope that you would be encouraged today. Y'all take care and God bless you.